Welcome to the Rope Access Channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the Harken Wingman. Let's get into it. The Wingman. So, this is Harken's version of a set of force or a mini hull kit or whatever you want to call it. If you pull on one side of the rope, you can lift on something pretty heavy fairly easy and lower it controlled. And that's a unique feature. So, the Wingman is, let's start with the bag. It's supplied with this bag, there's Velcro on here, and you can put on whatever for your team members or your company member or your own name or something on it so that it's recognizable for you or maybe designate this kit to the litter or to the stretcher or to or whatever. There's three little one, two, three loops in there. You can put carabiners on or whatever other gear you want. There's another uh, loop you can use for on the on the gear loop for your harness that you can carry it like this. And there's like two drainage holes in the back for when it's raining and wet and all the uh, debris can come out on the bottom side. So the bag opens up and then if you look in you see the device the wingman immediately and if you take it out you see that it actually has a sort of his own little compartment the rope is stored underneath there it's like a uh, like a storage shelf so that the, this device doesn't get entangled with other with the other rope underneath here uh, I think there's about 15 meters in here so five meter wingman but I'm not sure actually might be three meter. No, it's, I think it's a three meter wingman with 15 meters of rope in there. Let's stick with the bag for now. So the bag has a storage shelf or a compartment for the device itself, so it doesn't get entangled with the rest. So if you need it, you can just open it up here. And you see all the rope. Ah, all the rope in there. So that's very neat. It looks good. For me, it didn't suit my needs. My needs were different. Maybe this works for you, maybe it doesn't. We, we are free to choose and operate this however we want. So I took a different bag, something that is a, has a little bit more of a st steady, sturdy shape to it and a little bit more room and it feels a little bit more durable on my harness when I use it. And it has a lot of clips on it so you can put it on railings or next to your rig to rescue scenarios. So I store it in there. The only disadvantage is, is that the device and the rope are in the same compartment so they might get entangled. And then it depends on what is your industry, how important is that for you. You have to risk assess that for yourself. So let's talk about this device. Like I said, it's a mini hull kit made by Harken, the wingman, and it's a four to one or a five to one, depending on which orientation you put it in. If I would lift it like this, it would be a four to one. If I lift it, ah, I made a mistake. If I lift it like this, it would be five to one. If I lift it like this, it would be a four to one with a change of direction. One of the major advantages of this one mini hole kit or set of fours over other ones is the, 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 the vertical gain or the height of the device when it's fully collapsed. It's very small, other ones are bigger or bigger or longer, so you need more space underneath your tripod or your vortex or when you're working confined space and three centimeter counts and this might be important. So that's one unique feature, the way that this device collapses together beautifully. It's like a very thought out system. It has two swivel eyes, one at the top and one at the bottom. This tie wrap you see here is one of those ships for the, for the inspections. Um, so that's why that's there. It has an eight mil rope in there. That rope is proprietary made or custom made by Sterling. That comes to the device. The device is certified with that show officially. You cannot change it. Unofficially, well, you can do whatever you want, uh, just as long as your risk assessment is solid and you know what you're doing. And that's where things get dis discutable, I don't know the word. So that said, use it like this, don't change anything about it and the certification will be guaranteed. The working load limit is 4 km, because at 4 km, this cam here, is where the thing device locks onto the rope, or actually 
cantilevers, I think it is, what the right word is. Uh, there's a steady slip, a calculated slip. That's why this proprietary rope is important. It slips at f uh, 4KN load. So that's a lot more than what we can generate under normal working slip. Uh, circumstances. I'm talking from a rope access perspective, not a rescue perspective. If I have a two-person load in this and maybe put it on a tension line or something, I can think of uh, uh, some ways where you might actually go over 4KN and then it will slip, which can be a good thing because it will limit the forces. I would not use it as a force limiter though, so that's important to remember. It's an emergency feature, in my opinion. The braking strength, the minimum braking strength of this thing is 45 kN, and that's a lot. So that also means that it's G-rated for the, uh, the Northern American people. It's G-rated for rescue and everything. Uh, it's so fully CE certified. I will put the numbers on the screen. I don't remember them off the top of my head, uh, but it has pulleys in there and something else. I, and I can't even read it because I don't wear my glasses today. I, they are somewhere. I don't know where. So 45 kN, it has a small gain, and if you want, it slips at 4 kN, but if you don't want it to slip, you can tie it off with uh, sort of some sort of a slip knot, monter mule, mule hitch, mule, I forget those American or English names, I'm sorry. I will show an example somewhere. Uh, you can tie it off so that it doesn't slip, and then you have a, a braking strength of 45 kN, which is a lot. I have used this device in the last year. It's been in my position for about a year, or that one has been behind me. I have used it numerous times on jobs where I was not allowed to film. I've used it for, uh, what do you call it? Devi adjustable deviation when the, the rope deck is suspended and you just pull on it and you just, I want to go to here and you can keep going and you can release control as well. So that's a good thing. I've used it on litters where you do like the, you, you go through something and then you make it horizontal again and back up. I don't have any footage of it, but I will overlay it. I asked Harkin to help me out with this. So they send me the footage, the footage will be from uh, James, I will put the links in there. Thank you, man, that's beautiful filming as always. So how does this work, this device? Well, I rigged it up right here below me. I have a 50 gauge weight, it's almost in frame, two, two pieces of steel of 25 kilos, and I rigged it up as a four to one with a change of direction from the top. Because of the swivels, I can orientate the load, I can make it spin, but now you can see it will spin here, so, I can just move the swivels around and there will be no spinning in here where the ropes will always be free to move and not sliding against each other. So I lift it up and then you will hear that familiar sound which has been dubbed the sound of progress. We know it from the clutch. And I can lift it up and I can lift it up all the way. So I'm going to ram it in there. It doesn't get any higher. Now I know from other devices that are out there that if you want to lower out now it's going to be hard because you have to lift up and disengage a cam or lift up and push up a prosec and then you can sort of lower control but you're really lowering on hand strength and keeping a cam or a, a prosec open. It works, I don't know of any big major accidents that happened with people opening the cam and letting go. Maybe they happened, I'm not in the loop on everything. But with this device, I don't need to lift up, I just maintain control of the tail end of the rope as all descending devices. This is not a descender, but I'm gonna lower something. I take this cam or lever, or maybe this is the wing of the man, and I just lower it out, slow and controlled. And I could go faster, but this is good, right? The important thing with lowering th stuff like this, if I lower this 10 centimeters, there's 40 centimeters of rope sliding through my hands. So this will get hot real fast, take it slow. Like this. So it's a very nice and neat device, and it's very functional. You can put three carabiners in here. So I've got, let's see, one and two and three carabiners in there. So I can do all kinds of rigging with it, all kinds of 
stuff I want to make up with it. And I can also reverse it and create a 5 to 1 to make it even lighter. I changed it so it's upside down now or the other way around, it's not actually upside down. So if I would pull up now, I need to lift up like this. And it works, it's light, it's 50 kilos, so this should give me a, like 5 to 1, it should be 10 kilos, but probably with friction it's about 20 kilos I'm lifting. That's what it feels like. And when it's in frame you can see better, like this. So here's the load. The load is suspended in one, two, three, four, and five ropes, so it's a five to one. But I'm lifting up like this and I don't like it. So in my bag with the wingman lives a uh, pulley, a carabiner with a pulley integrated. This is a roll clip, but you, whatever works for you, anything works. You could actually add an extra pulley. But mine usually lives somewhere here and it changes a little bit. Because now I want it to be like this, the orientation. So I'm trying to make take care that it doesn't rub on anything. And now it's not as much as good as I like. So I'll put it in the anchor point like so. And come this way. So this is a lot better. It's still rubbing a little bit, but that's the way it is. And I will stand behind it because the angle is a little bit better. And now I can pull down, which makes it even lighter. All right. So this carabiner, or another version of it, lives, lives in that kit. Right now it's this one, but I also have the non-locking ones. Um, that makes it a 5 to 1. It makes the length a bit less if I want to have the control here. But it also makes it a little bit lighter. If I want to lower, it doesn't really change anything. I keep control of the tail end of the rope and I just have to lift this up and I can lower out easily, slow and controlled. So if I want to lock this off in situations where I have maybe like a deviation, adjustable deviation, or I tight use this to tighten anything, and I want to make use of that 45k and breaking strength, which we should never get close to, but I want to prevent that slip, I should lock it off with some sort of knot. And what I do, I just tie a slip knot like this, and I could double it up. And then maybe do one more. I don't know what it's called in English though. This is very bad. So if it would slide a little bit up, but it will stop, there will not. If something would happen, it, it's hardly good. It's going to go up a little bit, but I have to work for it. So like this. And now it stops, and I know my load is safe. Nothing will happen. I can take this out fairly easy. One, take the slip knot out. Two, go back, and I can haul it back up or lower it out, okay? Um, so, it, like with anything, read the user manual. There's an image in there, they, I, I forgot the name of the knot. Very well prepared, I just looked it up because I have to be prepared for the video. I'm sorry guys, I forgot. Um, but some sign of, like the same way you tie off a monter mule hitch. Like I said, sometimes I'm bad with the English words from uh, the knots. But a slip knot tied off with a like fisherman kind of thing, scaffold knot. This works beautiful. You can tie off anything with this. Okay, I even have a clip in point. I could call it a clip in point. Maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. And re releasing is easy as well, like so, and lower it out. So up, sound of progress, really good. Just ram it in there. And if I would take another system like my old one, the one I built myself about 15 years ago maybe, with some uh, double sheath pulleys and a little prosthetic and a carabiner which I can clip in to the side. The orientation, four to one, works beautiful, it's good, it's not certified. This is just accessory cord, has about eight Okay, and braking strength or something. But, and right now it's too old anyway. Um, but I've used this often to lift dishes into place and all this, like, like the little lifts to make things easier. I actually used it the first time was to, uh, I needed to move a lot of logs over a little river. So we made some tension line, use this, lift them up, throw them to the other side and pull it back. Very easy, worked like a charm. Then we got the things like the Petzl Jack and the Ederit K and the Aztec was out there. All good systems, but you need to lift up to have it go down. And for this, I can just go down slow and controlled. And if I open it completely, it's 50 kilos, not that much. 
Two fingers. Easy as that. Going down slow. So that's it for the Harken Wingman. I think it's a beautiful device. If you have any remarks, leave a comment down below. It is my favorite set of force at the moment. Probably there will be a new one or maybe an old one that I don't know of. And maybe somebody, maybe I will encounter that and something will change. Um, I'm happy right now with Harken because they're really putting in the work to make our work uh, more safe. There's a lot of companies really putting in the, in the work. If you like the video, <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to always be notified of a new upload. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Stay connected.